I'm going to now switch over and I'm going to open up the um, I'll open up the line right now to be able to answer some of your questions and questions and answer session. And I'll laugh for about 20 minutes or so. And um, as I said, if you do have questions right now, plug them in onto the right-hand side of your control panel and feel free to ask them. All right, let me um, jump over right now myself and have a look to see what questions there are. Okay. So, as I said, if you do have questions, um, this is your opportunity to be able to ask me right now. If, if the questions, uh, if you don't have any questions, that's fine. Um, you can continue to listen to hear the other questions. All right, so let's have a look. The first question is that um, from, I think, M. Fisher says to type the link of the chat in the window too. Okay, what I'll do is uh, I'm going to... Re be reposting this webinar up onto my blog and I'll put down the links. So testmarketsamurai.com is one of the links and also getvirtualstaff.com is the other link that you want to be able to access and you'll be able to watch that replay. Okay. Um, I'm just... I've got a question from Mark Rudder. If you're still there, it says, is there supposed to be something on the screen? And uh, yes, there is, Mark. I've actually... Yeah, started the, the webinar about at least a good hour and a bit ago. So hopefully you can see that. If not, that's fine. As I said, I've recorded this and I'll be replaying back onto the blog. Okay, um, Brian says here, I live in the state in the US that will not allow me to be an affiliate with Amazon. Yes, um, that's true. I, I'm aware of that, Brian. What I would do is don't worry too much about Amazon becoming an affiliate. As I said, use Amazon as a way to be able to find your ideas to be able to put your ideas together so that way you, you've got something to start with. Uh, in terms of affiliate programs, I'll be showing with you like a little bit later on inside the monetization uh, module within the uh, webinars how to be able to generate income as affiliates from different things. Uh, okay, here we go. This is a great question. Jeff, Jeff is asking how much training do you need to give a VA to be able to research and then build a site? Okay, very, very good question. Just excuse me because I've been talking, I just need to get a sip of water. Now, I'll give you an example in my experience and also on how I've done it with my virtual assistants. The way I've gone about it is that I've hired my virtual assistant full time uh, because I know, knew that I'll be giving her not just only this uh, type of work for niche websites and creating and building on doing all these kind of things but she also does help me with just little errands that I have in my business. But just to start off, what I would do is to give her this webinar. Let her watch this webinar first so that she understands the whole concept and the principles behind it. Um, just make sure that she does have skills in terms of uh, computer literate skills, how to use, be able to use Word, Microsoft Word. Has some kind of uh, experience in writing like it doesn't have to be professional writing, but as long as you can find out that they've got good English, clear, strong, concise English, which you'll be able to find out from the interviews that you do with them. If you talk with them on Skype, you'll be able to find that out. Uh, then you're pretty much set. You don't really need to have very, very high level of training. Most of the VAs that I've hired, I've trained them with my processes and systems because when they're fresh and they're green like that, that's the ideal time to give them all that because they're willing to absorb and learn as much as possible. So really, they don't really need to get much training from you except maybe just to give them this video and uh, give them access to your Market Samurai as well and get them just to play around with it. Once they get that and they understand this whole process, you're pretty much able to let them free and loose. And then as each webinar does come out each week, you can continue to pass on those to them and let them um, basically, yeah, follow the step-by-step -step instructions. So great question there, Jeff. Next question is from Richard. Does Google's affiliate, oh sorry, does Google's all in title a good way to determine the competition? I remember that, um, that term that you can use, but in my opinion, it's a very, very long way to be able to find out the competition because, um, yeah, you'd be spending time counting how much there is. You can use that and I've seen that being used with um, SEO experts but I'm not very familiar with it so I wouldn't be able to answer that question exactly but I'm pretty sure you can but it may be a very, very long process for you to do. Okay, next question is from Michael. Michael says, how important is it to have some knowledge and interest in the niches you choose? 
Excellent question there. Um, <laughs> I've, in my experience, I haven't necessarily had that much interest in a lot of the niches that we've chosen. I'll give you a few niches that we've chosen. One niche is in singing. I have no idea about singing. I can't sing for crap. <laughs> so if you asked me to get on stage, I, I wouldn't know what to talk or what to do to sing and I don't, I don't even know how to be able to talk about singing. But that's a niche that we've chosen and uh, we just do research on that. We find out what information the market wants and then just provide that content. So not necessarily do you have to have knowledge and interest in the niches you choose but it is ideal if you do because if you are planning to write this content yourself or you're planning to do a lot of this yourself then it's a lot easier because then when, when you do have to create the content to submit to directories or content to put onto your website, at least you have some idea of it. I'll give you an example of one that I am heavily involved in within my team is something to do with weddings and engagements. I have a particular niche in that. And because as I said, I'm getting, I'm engaged and I'm getting married actually this year in a few months time. I'm very interested in finding out all about engagement gifts. I'm interested in finding out all about wedding plans, all those kind of things which is related to a niche. And therefore, I can give my own experience and also talk it about from my point of view. And that does make it a lot easier to be able to write about that niche, to talk about it and to add interest to it. And that makes it so much more fun to do as well at the same time. So yes and no, I can definitely tell you it's better definitely to have interest in your niche and to have a passion in it because it'll make it so much easier to write. But if you're looking to outsource it and have someone else to do it, then no, it's no problem just to be able to find a niche that you're not interested in because at the end of the day, your virtual assistant or whoever you hire is going to be doing the work for you. Great. Um, so Richard replies back, um, for example, if all in title is less than 1,000, uh, I'm not 100% sure about that one, Richard, but yeah, if, if, if that works out for you, then definitely um, I would find out a little bit more. As I said, the quickest way, in my opinion, is probably just to use a tool like Market Samurai and um, you know, just get it out there and use it. The other thing I want to mention to you as well is if you do purchase Market Samurai, normally it's $140 something, $49 if you uh, purchase it after I think a week or two but if you purchase it right now, you get it only for $97. So there is a saving of about $50 there if I remember correctly. Um, I can't remember if that's the exact price but there is a, a discount for buying it early and it's not that much because you know to spend $100 on getting a market samurai, it is going to be a tool that you're going to be able to use over and over and over again for no, numerous niches and it's a tool that has saved me hundreds and hundreds of hours. I mean, as I said, I charge people $500 an hour just to be able to consult. If I had to spend 10 hours of that time, that's five grand there. And um, to, to have a software that does it for me in such a short period of time, it's definitely worthwhile the investment. Okay, um, ne next question is from Mark. Question is, how do you know if you have enough work to justify hiring a full-time virtual assistant? Well. Mark, you don't. <laughs> uh, the only thing I can say to you is that when you do hire someone on full time, they are committed to your business and you'll be surprised because when they start working on this for full time with you, you'll start to see results very, very quickly because when you have someone working on it full time, they're just going to keep doing this and building up your sites and all that and you, you can really, really speed up things much faster. Now, from time to time, I always send stuff outside of these new sites that I get built to my virtual assistant to do different things like she might upload videos for me for my blog and so forth. So there's a lot of other things that, that I get her to do and I'm pretty sure if you do have someone on full time, you'll be able to find work for them because there's always work that we can do. If not, then what I would suggest is I'm pretty sure there's a few people here right now that would love to hire a virtual assistant but can't afford to hire them full time. So share with someone else on a part-time basis and um, just basically pay half each and then that way they can, they've can they been trained to do exactly the same thing of, of knowing how to build these niche websites but working for both of you and that way you could definitely spread the costs. Um, and then the question is, could you hire staff that could be part-time? Yeah, I've sort of answered that as well. So good question. Uh, okay. And Mark says, next question. Thanks. Second question. What if you think a niche will expand dramatically over the next couple of years but has no visibility yet? I've heard no competition is bad but if you're convinced it will dramatically grow. Yeah, I, I've had that question before and one of our students asked me that question too. It's, it's, it's really difficult to say because 
you don't know how soon or how quick and there's no proven results to say that this market's going to take off. I had a friend who started off uh, in the VoIP industry going back many, many years ago and they said to me, yeah, you know, we got into it but we got into it five years earlier <laughs> and um, they had a gut feeling that it was going to take off but they didn't know exactly when. And by then, five years later, they had spent a lot of money like hundreds of thousands of dollars inside that particular niche, um, oh sorry, but that particular industry but didn't get any results from it and in the end just jumped over and started an electrical side business which is completely different. So it's really difficult to see and you can't really see where you're going to go. What I teach and what I show you is that you want to be able to base all your knowledge on current results and that's what you want to be able to do because it gives you certainty that the market will continue to expand. Especially with the, today's market, there's so much information out there for any market you go into. All you need to do is just do the right keyword research and provide the right value in the products to the right people and you know, you, you'll, you'll have a very, very high chance of succeeding. So that's what I would say. You know, I, I would not recommend in my opinion to go into a market that you, you don't have any clue about because the last thing you can do is um, set yourself up for, for disaster because it may work. You know, I'm not saying it won't work but I just can't guarantee that you're going to succeed that way and it may take a very, very long time. Okay, so uh, next next thing is from Richard. He says, um, MS or Market Samurai is indeed a great tool. Thank you, Richard. And uh, a virtual assistant is indeed a good idea but I'm not sure how to train them. I'm worried. I don't know how to train them well. Okay, um, it's a good, good, very, very valid point that I noticed that a few of the questions are surrounding about training. Now, I wouldn't worry too much about training because as I said, I'm providing pretty much all the content here. You can pretty much give them this webinar to them and then just get them to follow this step by step. I'm literally doing the training for you if you want to put it that way and uh, most likely all they have to do is just really follow the instructions and just give them simple guidelines like you might choose a few topics that you're interested in and they may go out there and find those topics and research it for you, come back to you and you make the decision whether or not you jump into those markets. But there's not much training you really need to give them. Just make sure that they can uh, follow instructions e.g. like this webinar and also you pay them on time and that's pretty much it. Um, okay, a great question from Market Multipliers. Uh, any reason you don't use Google Trends? I do. Um, that was one of the top 15 odd other research ones that I do but as I said, this webinar, I just wanted to give you the ones that I have been using more regularly. Um, Google Trends is great and it does give you a lot of great results as well and you can, most welcome to use it. It's just as, as I said, this webinar, I can only provide so much because I want to get through all the content that I want to provide today. Okay, um, yes and Richard says, hey, thanks a lot Tyrone, is this recorded and yes it is. As I'm speaking right now, questions and answers recorded, the whole webinar is recorded so I'll be putting it up as a replay and you come back to it anytime you want. All right, so thank you to everyone who's come onto this call tonight. I really appreciate you taking your time out. I know it's probably a bit late, some people are 9 p.m. right now um, or actually 10, 10.30 p.m. Some people are 6, 6.30 so I really, really appreciate that you do come onto the call tonight to listen to me and ask me these questions and it's a great opportunity to also meet everyone as well too. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I actually want to answer one last question is, have you used Traffic Travis from Mark Lin? No, I haven't but um, it sounds like because Mark Lin is actually a very, very well-known affiliate so basically, I know that his products are pretty good. Um, and this is what's been recommended. So maybe just if anyone wants to check it out, it's called Traffic Travis and um, that's something that's good. And the last question is, what time is it down under for you? Well, for me, it's about 2.30 and I'm getting ready to go and have lunch. <laughs> so that's pretty much it for me. Well, I'm going to wrap it up right now. As I said, thank you so much for coming onto the call tonight. I really appreciate your time. I hope to see you on the next webinar which will be the same time next week and I'll, as I said, I'll be covering quite a lot of detail about your um, setting up the websites and also how to go about choosing the great domain. In the meantime, I really, really encourage you to take some action steps on what you've learned tonight. Feel free to download and watch the uh, webinar again when I do post it up onto blog and I wish you all the best and greatest success with the first part of the research and I'll look forward to seeing you next week for the next session. So have a great night everyone and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. 
Now, if you like more resources like this one, you can find them inside Mass Outsource Mastermind, along with video tutorials and step-by-step -step instructions showing exactly how I use them. To get a 30-day no-risk trial membership to Mass Outsource Mastermind, simply visit freevideoset.com. Until next time, I wish you success in your quest for outsourcing.